Hi there, and thanks for joining. In this sample, I will demonstrate how to enable cross-origin resource sharing, otherwise known as CORS, for your Apigee API proxy. Let's get started. CORS is an HTTP mechanism enforced by modern browsers to allow or deny the sharing of data between different origins. In this slide, we see that the Chrome browser is accessing from the origin domainA.com. In the top right, we see the browser called to the domainA.com web server. Since both the browser and the web server are on domainA.com, it is a same site request and is not impacted by CORS. In this slide, we also see a request from the browser to domainB.com. Since the browser and the server origins do not match, this is a cross-origin request. These requests will be either allowed or denied by the server's course policy or lack thereof. At a high level, this is what a basic CORS error will look like for a simple request if CORS is not enabled on the server. The request will be sent and processed by the server, but the response will be blocked by the browser on its way back to the web app. But these requests between origins can be enabled with a simple Apigee CORS policy if desired. With CORS, there is also the important concept of preflight requests. Non-simple requests, such as put requests or requests with custom non-standard headers, trigger preflight requests that confirm the CORS configuration before sending the original request. The preflight request will always be an options request, and if it fails, then the original request will not send at all. In this sample, I will show you how to configure cores for your Apigee APIs so your APIs can successfully serve cross-origin requests. Let's get started. Now, before we begin this accelerator sample, be sure to read the intro sections and note the prerequisites. You'll be able to follow along with the instructions either in Cloud Shell or right here in this repository. In this video, we will follow along with Cloud Shell. So without further ado, click the Cloud Shell button. This will download the entire Apigee Samples GitHub repository code into your Cloud Shell editor. First, CD into the correct folder. If needed, you can ensure that you are signed into the correct account with this command. Next, update the environment file with your own Apigee information. Then, source your environment file. Now, run this command to deploy the API proxy directly into your environment. Once that finishes, we'll navigate to the next page and follow the instructions there. The instructions say to navigate to the Apigee homepage, so let's do that. Then go to Develop and then API Proxies before clicking into the Sample Course Proxy. Once inside, navigate to the Develop tab. Next, let's take a look at our proxy. It only has one policy, a CORS policy named cores add cores. Please review the CORS policy documentation as it can do much more than shown in this video, and CORS is a very important topic to fully understand. Let's navigate to the Debug tab. From the Debug tab, choose to start a debug session. With the debugger still running, navigate to an HTTP request service such as test-cores.org. These requests will need to be sent from an online browser service. First, let's see what it looks like when a request fails due to cores. From testcores.org, find the remote URL field and enter in your no cores proxy endpoints URL. Leave all other fields at their default values. Click the send request button and view the response. Your request will fail as it does not trigger the cores add cores policy within Apigee. To see the cores error message, open up your browser console. In Chrome, this is done by right-clicking the web page, selecting Inspect, and then choosing the Console tab. You should see a CORS error message inside. Let's navigate to the Apigee debugger. Despite the CORS error, you should still see a 200 status code for that request. While 200 status codes usually indicate success, we know that in this case, the request was blocked by the browser due to CORS. Now, let's navigate back to testcores.org and trigger a successful cross-origin request. In the remote URL field, update the URL with a slash enable proxy suffix instead of slash no cores. Leave all other fields at their default values and click the send request button again. You should see a 200 status code this time, meaning that the response returned back to the client successfully. Now, let's navigate back to the Apigee debugger. You will still see a 200 status code for that request, 
but this time we know that the request wasn't blocked by the browser. This is because we met the necessary conditions to execute the cores-add cores policy. Now, let's trigger a request with a course preflight. Course preflight requests are sent ahead of your request if your request is not simple. So far, all of our requests have been simple, so let's change that for our next test by adding foo bar into the request headers field in testcores.org. Our cores-add course proxy policy has already been configured to allow the new header foo. Click the send request button and view the response. You should see a 200 status code, meaning that the response has returned back to the client successfully. Let's navigate to the Apogee debugger. You will still see a 200 status code for your GET request, but you should also see an options request as well. That options request was our preflight request sent by cores to ensure that our API is properly configured before sending the GET request. Now, let's go back to Cloud Shell. Scroll down and click into the next section. Optionally, you can rate this accelerator and can clean up the cores proxy that we created in this video and delete it. To do so, run the cleanup script within Cloud Shell. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was useful to you. If you have not yet signed up for Apogee, use the top link. And if you have any questions, please visit the Apogee community. Thank you.